This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. One day the devil came to him, for he was a minor demon, asked him to torture some humans. With his two friends in tow, Middens and El Sapo, the Baron Mondo Van Duren, on Nightmare Theatre. Look, Middens, I stand behind the decision. New Coke was a great idea and it was all mine. It's not my fault the ad campaign failed. It could have been a huge success if they would have marketed it better. In the ad campaign I came up with, my face was on every can and bottle. Imagine, people would have loved... Oh, wait, we're, we're on. Uh, hello and welcome to Nightmare Theater. Mittens and I were just talking about how an idea can be good, but it won't get anywhere unless you market it right. Even a bad idea, properly marketed, can beat a good idea. And speaking of bad ideas, I wonder where El Sapo is. He ought to be here by now. Hey guys, how is it going? Man. I was working in the yard and it is hot out there. Like Mexican desert hot. Like the earth is a mile from the sun hot. I was nearly dehydrated and the lady offered me a drink, but get this, all she had was some old cans of new Coke and some expired clam juice. So, I took the clam juice. Oh, okay Mr. Beverage Expert. Since you know so much about good drinks, what do you know about doing your job? Do you have a movie for night? No, not yet. I nearly died out there. I almost dehydrated, I told you. I'm probably delirious from the heat. The hot sun can ruin your brain, you know. How would anyone tell the difference if your brain got ruined? What? At any rate, I ain't got a movie. But I found this under a big cactus out there. Can you show it while I go look for one? Sure. Let me see. Uh, oh boy, chapter eight of The Phantom Creeps and a cartoon called The Cobweb Hotel. Uh, Mittens will get this queued up while El Sapo gets a movie. Sheesh. He's crazy from the heat, folks, so sit back and enjoy this as El Sapo wanders around looking for a film. Bring on the Coast Guards. We can't get away with that box now. We'd never be able to get out of the harbor. What are you going to do? Take it to the river warehouse until I can figure out a plan to smuggle it out of the country. Brown, get that suitcase out of the boat. Get the small boat ready. Yes, sir. Now, here's what I want you to say if anybody comes aboard asking questions. Yeah, I'm off. I bet I'll just put a crash button. 
get the dry clothes out of the stern lock. Now get over there. All I know is that a Mr. Curtis chartered the yacht for a pleasure cruise. He was on board with some friends and... And then they started shooting my plane full of holes. Why? I've no idea. Though I did hear them say something about an attack. I don't know anything, Jim. No, whoever was here made a clean getaway. Put it in the Coast Guard dock. Yes, sir. I wanted the boys check on him tomorrow. Right. We better hurry to Mallory's and have him construct another neometer so we can find that box. If the foreign agents smuggle it out of this country, it might mean war. I'd call out the army and round up these spies. Create a fine international incident. No, these things have to be done undercover. That's just the trouble. You don't give me anything worth writing a story about. Had a good one about that Navy plane that crashed last night. Mm-hmm. And my editor bowled me out because I couldn't tell him who it was or what they were trying to do. Why not let her break the story about our belief that Zorka is still alive? Can't see what good that would do. Anyway, we're not sure of it ourselves. The only explanation for the things that have been happening that's right, Bob. Remember the mechanical iron man and how things are always being taken by something invisible. I'm still not sure. Anyway, I've got Max stationed at Zorka's house for any clue that Zorka is still alive. Are you sure there was another man in that office where you got that box? Certainly, I saw him. If you remember, I suspected some time ago that Zorka might not be dead. And things have happened since to verify that. The office was taken under the name of Z. Note the Z, as in Zorka. Also the fact that it must be someone very familiar with his work. We can easily find out. The two of them are still locked up in the vault there. If it is Zorka, we can send both him and his secret to our country. It will save us endless time in learning how to use whatever it is he has invented. I'll bring them both down here. We can make that fellow monk talk anyway. Did you put the box in the river warehouse? Yes. Harlan's going to analyze its contents. If he ever gets up nerve enough to open it. Take me one of those belts, Dr. Zorka, so I can make myself invisible too. If you don't, the cops will get me sure and I'll spend the rest of my life in jail. There's no time for that. Besides, I need someone to draw suspicion from myself. What we do? We can't go back to our office in that building now they know it's there. You forget I can go back unseen. Take the car and hide it in our secret garage and wait for me in the laboratory. How are you going to get there? Never mind that. The important thing is to find out what they have done with my meteorite. Chief had the right hunch. What's that? Sarka's still alive. Whoever worked his way out of that vault had plenty on the ball. Well, he'll never find that box of his where we've got it hidden in the warehouse. If it was Sarka, he'd head back to his laboratory. We'll look that place over. Better go in separate cars. You take the south road. We'll meet at Zorka. Take that, will you, Bob? Yeah? Yeah. All right, Mac, we'll be right out. Mac says the car just arrived at Zorka's house. You think some of the foreign agents were in it? Say, uh, Jean comes back, keep her here. what we'll run into in there.
Another carload of gum since I phoned you. We'll close in and see what's going on. What puzzles me is that they've got the box. What do they want here? Uh, they probably have the same hunch we have. That Zorka's still alive. You stay here, Mac. Keep your eyes open. Yes, sir. Now we will learn what they have done with my precious element. Give me a boost, Jim. Maybe I can see him. Same place we did in the box? Yeah, it's handy to the pier. She wants to ship them both out of the country as soon as possible. What do you mean, handy to the pier? It's a half mile from the waterfront. Oh, you're thinking about the other joint. I mean the old warehouse across from the Green Star Pier. Pipe down, both of you. We have tricked them into revealing the hiding place of our meteorite. Come on. Get in your car, Mac, and watch them. They leave trail. Yes, sir. They are all destroyed. I must go to that warehouse. Well, let's get out of here. over there. Let's find out.
Where's the box the boys brought last Upstairs. Night? Hey, what's it to you? Take us up there. Come on, quit stalling. Where's that box? In the experimental lab. The door's locked and... Now, one more. Let me look the Jim. Come on, you. Don't make a sound because I'll be right outside. We've beaten us to it. Welcome back. While we're waiting for El Sapo to return with tonight's film, now would be a good time to break out your computer, tablet, or other personal communications device and let us know what you think of the show. Visit us at nightmaretheater.com. Operators are standing by. Now, let's get back to the cartoon.
find that the service is well. <laughs> now you needn't be shy. I won't harm a fly. Spend the night at the Cobweb Hotel. <laughs> Come into my parlor, please do. <laughs> In a while, all your cares will be through. <laughs> There'll be no rent to pay. Don't you be here to stay. Spend the night at the Cobweb Hotel. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello and welcome back. Well, Cobweb Hotel was some sort of cartoon, wasn't it? That spider sure got his in the end. And chapter eight of The Phantom Creeps. Boy, that just gets better by the minute. Um, that building collapsed in flames and there's no way those guys made it out. Every week. I wonder where El Sapo is with tonight's movie. Here I am, boss. Say, you know what? While I was down there looking for a movie, I watched a few minutes of that cartoon. Man, spiders are sure scary, aren't they? I can't stand spiders. But let me ask you this, and you too, Mittens. If you were a fly, would you really stay at a hotel called the Cobweb Hotel? Yes, yeah, Sapo, it is really poorly named. You would think they would have come up with something better, but here's an idea. It's a cartoon! It wasn't a PBS Ken Burns documentary. Did you manage to find a movie at least? I found one. It was buried in the basement, and I mean literally buried. It was under the floor, and there was some writing on the floorboard covering it, something about an ancient curse warning people not to watch it. I hesitate to ask, but what's the movie called? It's called The Mesa of Lost Women. Oh no, I, I know this one. This film has got to be one of the worst films ever made. It has it all, horrible acting. Scenes that in no way follow each other, a disjointed plot, and the effects. Oh man, the effects. There's a spider in here that makes that spider in that episode of Gilligan Island look like Shelob from Lord of the Rings. Oh, it's chock full of stars. It's got Jackie Coogan, who played Uncle Fester on The Addams Family, and Lyle Talbot, who appeared in many Ed Wood films. Oh, wait a minute. This is not an Ed Wood film, is it? I've heard those films are very poorly made. Well, no, this is not an Ed Wood film. But the only thing good about it is that it briefly features the great Dolores Fuller. You're on a blink, boss. Who is she? Geez, don't they teach you anything in school these days? Dolores Fuller dated the great Ed Wood. She was in such films as Glenn or Glinda and Bride of the Monster. Now, she also wrote a song for Elvis Presley called Improbably Do the Clam. But even she can't save this film. No power on heaven or earth can help you to understand the sheer ineptitude of The Mesa of Lost Women. So without further ado, let's get started. Some films ask you to suspend disbelief. For this one, you have to suspend everything. Enjoy. assurance of this race of puny bipeds with overblown egos. The creature who calls himself man. He believes he owns the earth and every living thing on it exists only for his benefit. Yet how foolish he is. Consider, even the lowly insect that man trods underfoot outweighs humanity several times and outnumbers him by countless billions. In the continuing war for survival between man and the hexapods, only a nutter fool would bet against the insect. Let a man or woman venture from the well-beaten path of civilization, let him cross the threshold of the limited intellect, and he encounters amazing, wondrous things. 
the unknown and terrible. If he escapes these weird adventures with his life, he will usually find he left his reason behind him. Perhaps that is what happened to these two souls, lost in a great Mexican desert. But then, ask yourself, why would anyone trod from the usually well-traveled roads of this modern age? From the luxury of an air-conditioned automobile? It's difficult for our modern world of statistics and electronics to accept miracles. But you could almost call this a miracle. A genuine miracle. Out of hundreds and thousands of square miles of heat and seared wasteland, where the vultures wait for the other vultures to die, an American oil surveyor has chosen to explore this particular terrible corner of the earth. The Muerto Desert. The desert of death. This surveyor can hardly credit his eyes. Perhaps they're only elusive images produced by roasting the optic nerves. But if they do exist, if they are living things from somewhere, one fact is certain. Miracle or not, they will not be living things for long. The Muerto Desert, true to its name, will soon convert them into dead things. I doubt it, Doc. Even if they got across that desert alive, the sun's bound to have cooked their brains. It's a miracle to me how Pepe and Frank found them. No, I better be getting back to work. Beats me how they got there, or what they were doing. That's the most godforsaken spot on Earth. Maybe they're from that missing plane we read about. That plane was headed for Mexico City. Have to be 100 degrees off to land in the Muerto Desert. 100 degrees or not, they had to come from somewhere. Where'd you say you picked them up, Pepe? On the road to Sarpa Mesa. Senor Medico. Oh. Pretty girl under all that sunburn. She was almost completely dehydrated. I don't know what kept them alive. <coughs> You're all right. You're safe. You're in an oil company office. <coughs> sure. She's in about the same shape you are. <coughs> she hasn't come out of it yet. But I think you're both going to be all right. Here. Try to take this. <coughs> Who did you think you were, anyway, Superman? Sure. Nobody's ever been able to walk across that desert and come out alive. You try with a girl. You said this was an oil company. Can you load a truck with full drums and bring all the men you can spare? If we get there in time, maybe we can... And what? Burn them out before they scatter. That's the only thing that scares them, fire. But if we're too late, we're done. Now, just a minute, young oh. fella. Take it easy. You've been out in the sun too long. That sort of will quiet them down a little bit. I tell you, I don't know. You haven't seen them. But if you had, you'd realize you'd seen them. Now, look, you said Superman. Well, these are super monsters or bugs. As big as we are, they can, they can, they can kill you with one bite. What can? These, these, these things are... If they scatter before we get there, we can... Where do they come from? He's got a, an underground lab up on Zarpa Mesa. He, he does something with their glands. Who does? Dr. Aranya. Aranya? I could own it. I told you the sun had cooked their brains. Pepe doesn't think so. And besides, nobody's ever been able to climb Zarpa Mesa. But you can reach it by plane. Let's listen to a story anyway. What have we got to lose? Well, uh, it all started on the border a few days back. I had a pilot for Jan Van Croft, the big financier. Well, we had engine trouble. I made a forced landing. 
in a field outside this little Mexican town. After we landed, I stayed with the with the ship. To... Quite a story he's telling, isn't it, Pepe? You heard from your people about Sarpa Mesa and the mysterious Doctor Aranya, even though your bosses haven't. So, why tell them? They would only laugh at you and say, "Poor Pepe, you're getting old." But you've heard for years about the grotesque and misshapen people, about the women, strange women who do not die. No, Grant Philip doesn't know the whole story. You see, he came into it rather late. It actually began oh, almost a year ago, the night Dr. Leland Masterson, the world famous specialist and researcher found himself in the middle of the Muerto Desert, the desert of death. He came in answer to a rather mysterious summons from a man he admired, but knew only as a name signed to a series of brilliant scientific treatises, Aranya. Oh, we've arrived. must be playing tricks on you in this light. Is that what you think, Masterson? What was it you thought you saw? Apparently, they've come correctly. But uh, to Masterson, it seems strange. A man with the genius of Aranya building his laboratory on an inaccessible mountaintop in the middle of an uninhabited desert? Why Zarpa Mesa? Why Zarpa Mesa, indeed? A natural question, Doctor, and one that was soon to be answered, though in a way so fantastic and horrible as to make a man of science doubt his senses. Masterson. Dr. Leland Masterson. I believe Dr. Rania is expecting me. Systems of insects. Dr. Masterson? Dr. Aranya? I 
trust your journey was pleasant? Well, moderately. I must confess, though, that I was a trifle uneasy when your driver headed into the Muerto Desert. But everything seems to have worked out. The sentimental human mind being what it is, this is the only sort of a place I could find to carry on my work. But I can understand your feelings. These papers on the anterior lobe of the pituitary and the effects of the specific hormones on other living things. Quite the most remarkable endocrine theories that I've ever read. Well, thank you, Doctor. You're coming from the world's foremost organotherapist, a fine compliment. <laughs> That's why I jumped at the chance to come here, work with you, examine your theories. Oh, let us understand one thing, Doctor. These are not theories. Not theories? I have successfully proved every point over and over again in my laboratory. Wait a minute. You want me to believe that you have produced these things by experimentation? And many more. And my eyes weren't playing tricks. So you can see why such work as this must be completed inside a mountaintop amidst this desolation. Oh, I'm completing a most unusual experiment in my laboratory. Doctor, would you care to observe? Oh, certainly. Come along. substance which controls the growth pattern of human beings. Yes, it was the subject of one of your papers. Yes, and with this accomplished, I said to myself, what would the effect be of uh, this hormone or a complete human pituitary being transferred in the body of another creature? I began a series of experiments. Moffitt's success among the lesser animals, a complete failure among birds. And then, experimenting one day upon the hexapods, I came upon the Therophysidia family. The tarantula? Exactly. The tarantulas began to yield amazing results. They grew as large as human beings. Began developing new reasoning powers. And I found I had the telepathic power to communicate with them. And then I reversed the process, transplanted the control substance of the insect back into the human body. Doctor, observe this girl. I call her Talentella. She has human beauty and intelligence still possesses the capacities and instincts of the giant spider. How do you mean? She has the indestructibility of the insect. If her body became damaged, if she were to lose an arm or a leg, she could grow a new one. I expect Tarantella may survive for hundreds and hundreds of years. And what about males? Well, unfortunately, in the insect world, the male is a puny, unimportant thing. You saw a few of the examples. The dwarfs. I think we're beginning to get some results. What is it? If we are successful, I shall have a super female spider with a thinking and reasoning brain. A creature that someday may control the world. Subject to my will.
convinced now, Doctor? I hope you appreciate this opportunity I'm giving you to become a colleague of mine. No. No. You can't do these things. You can't bring with the way of the Creator. Gibberish. You're evil. This place is like... You must be destroyed. You want all the foul things that you've made. You made a choice, Doctor. A very poor choice. Of course, you know I cannot let you leave this place. Some way, somehow, I'll find a way to put an end to you, you ghastly experiments. <laughs> I was hoping for a colleague, but well, at least we have another experimental subject. Hello and welcome back to Nightmare Theater. I promise, folks, we're almost through this one. Just hang in there. It's going to be... Hey, hey, guys, look what I found down in the basement. El Sapo, that spider is as fake as the mole on Dr. Aranya's face. Don't even try some crazy shtick based on the film, like you have a pet spider, or maybe you're breeding a race of super spiders who will help you take over the world, or you're gonna open a hotel for spiders, or crossbreed mittens with a spider. Just don't even do it. So you probably don't wanna hear about that bottle of spider juice I found in the basement? One drink gives you the power of a daddy long leg spider, the second most powerful spider in the kingdom of the spiders. No, no, I don't. I don't want any wacky nonsense, none. Let's just move along and get through this horrible, horrible film. Okay, okay, but I still think Ed Wood had his hands in this one. This film has the wood stink all over it. I swear that's the same music from Jailbait. Well, it is the same music, but this is not an Ed Wood film. It has to be. That opening scene of those two walking across the desert lasted half an hour. That's just what Ed Wood would do. It is not an Ed Wood film. It was directed by Ron Orman and Herbert Trevos. That's an anagram for Ed Wood. And how can a movie have two directors? It is not an anagram. Last word on this, it is not an Ed Wood movie. We'll get to the directors later. What do you think of this film? Not much. I'm not sure I get the movie, to be honest with you. The guy at the beginning gets confined to and then busts out of an asylum. And then he pulls a gun on a couple in a bar and he shoots a lady. And why does he sit there with that goofy smile on his face? And where did that Asian man come from? You got me, and you're one to talk about goofy looks. Maybe if you watch more, it'll make sense. So why don't you get back to the Mesa of Lost Women here on Nightmare Theater. Thank you. 
respondeu. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. What a dump. Well, it isn't exactly to start with a violent mid, but... Senora, senor, the best people in the house. and board town. And you would drag me to this dive, this unupholstered sewer. Oh, I find this place rather amusing. Your great southwest has a certain uh, flavor, no? No. I don't happen to be in the mood for a cook's tour of our great southwest. If it wasn't for that forced landing, we'd be in Mexico getting married by now. But my dear, you can't blame me for the motor trouble. Those things will happen to the best of places. Well, it didn't have to happen on my wedding day. No, you're acting childish, and that's not you. After all, being able to adapt oneself to any situation is the mark of the true sophisticate. <laughs> I'm sorry. And you're not angry with me? Of course not, Jan. J. Masterson is the name. May I? I beg your pardon. May I say you are beautiful, my dear? Very beautiful. And good. That's very kind of you. Yes, Ru, the plane is ready, huh? Not for some time. The pilot is having considerable trouble. Spend a small fortune for a plane. Hire the best pilot I can get. And what happens? Well, Wu, what are you waiting for? Get back to the plane. Yes, Master.
certainly good to see you. I've been looking for you for two days. I'm sorry, but I felt like a little trip. We missed you, sir. Dr. Harrison wishes to see you, you know. <laughs> I know, George. But I don't want to see him. I don't get this. Who are you and what's this all about? I'm his nurse, miss. His nurse? Yes, you see, Mr. Masterson is... No, no, George. I wouldn't do that. You see, I like this lady. before you can reach him. Thank you, George. Well spoken. I only did what had to be done. George! Don't take another step. This lady is my friend, and nobody shall hurt her. I will kill her first. with me. But Mr. Masterson, she's not going with us. Not going with us? You must, my dear. You're in danger. 
But we've got to get to the landing field. Landing field? Very well, I shall take you there. Let me talk to the sheriff. Doreen, dear, you sit up here in front. Miss Doreen is going to sit with me, aren't you? Yes. Yes, of course. There's a dead woman lying right here on the floor. That's right, Sheriff. He shot her dead. No, she's right where she says. Nobody touched a thing. We... Sheriff, the body just got up and walked out of here. Hello, and welcome back to Nightmare Theater. Now this movie might not be very good. In fact, it's awful, but I do like the music and that dancing was kind of amazing, wasn't it? I was not impressed. W what do you mean? I was dancing the Tarantella before I could walk and I look much better in a dress than Sister Spider there does. Oh, really? Oh, yes. I was a pretty good dancer back in my chicken salad days. In fact, get this. I once danced the Tarantella in a Mexican bar that looked just like that one. Oddly enough, a fellow in the audience once took a shot at me. Of course, they always shot at me when they danced or rustled or walked down the street. Yeah, I, I bet they did. Say, would you like to favor us with a few of your dance moves, Mr. Dancer? Well, it's been a long time, but I could give it the old junior college try. I call this one the Sapo Shimmy. It's designed to amuse and delight the ladies. Now, I don't have my dancing shoes on, but here goes. Oh dear Lord, I want you to shoot me. You didn't let me take it downtown. You actually did that in public for money? Well, I never got paid. Yeah, they should have paid you with their fists. Let's get back to the Mesa of Lost Women here on Nightmare Theater. Now to be fair, I usually did this in the Speedo. Do you want me to go change? No, 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 no. At last. And Phillips seems to be ready for the takeoff. All set to go, Phillips? Sorry, sir, but one of the engines still acting up. Whatever it is, I can't find the butt. It's probably nothing serious. Can't we take off anyway? No, sir. I can't take that chance. You're the captain. How much longer do you Bye. think of it? Dear young man, I want to fly. You... you want to? I've always wanted to fly. And now I will. Sorry, sir, but I'm the one who decides whether we fly or not. I command, and thou shalt obey. Is he kidding? He ain't kidding, mister. You'd better do as he says. We fly now. You go first. Listen, the police! At last! Don't be afraid. I won't let them harm you. Get in, quick. Come along, George. Now we will all fly. Everything goes all right, about an hour and a half. It's wonderful up here. So close to heaven. Wait a minute. Something wrong with this gyro compass. 
Somebody's fooled with the setting. We've been flying 100 degrees off course. I knew it. The left engine's acting up already. Is it bad, John? Do we have to go down again? How could I know? Just stay calm, please. Nothing seriously wrong so far. Much worse. I'll have to go down and fast. I can't see a place to land. Don't look too good, miss. We keep on flying. I like it. This is my order. Fasten your safety belts can't last much longer. And please remain calm. Can't you find the landing spot, Phillips? Not yet. But I am trying for that Mesa dead ahead. Do you think we'll make it? I don't know, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. Miss Culbertson, no smoking. Okay, Captain. But may I ask where we are? Somewhere over Mexico at an altitude of 1,500. I'm of a dying engine. Everyone's okay. Doesn't do us any good, not in this ship. Birds fly without motors, and so will we. Mister, I don't know who you are or what you are, but this bird won't fly. When a bird is sick, he has to land. And our bird is sick, very sick. The sick I shall heal. The good I shall protect. We've got a chance. I'm going down. Well, hold tight. It'll be a rock. Hold on, everybody. This looks too short. I'll have to break the run. Stick close. I want to talk to you. Right. I never thought he'd make it, Phillips. But we did, sir. Good girl, Miss Culberson. Oh, thank you, Captain. I like it here. It sounds strange up here. Do you hear that? It must be the echo of our voices, my dear, thrown back at us from the forest. Two days ago, he got away from us. I've been hunting him ever since. I caught up with him in that border dive just before I killed that dancer. I tried, but I couldn't stop him. Why did he kill her? How did he get that gun? Nobody knows why he kills. He just wants to, and he does. Where well, he got that gun? Probably bought it. He has lots of money all the time. Doesn't mean a thing to him. Can't we get that gun away from him? I'll try, Captain. You can bet on that. But for the sake of all of us, don't try to rush or force him. Leave it to me. I... May I smoke now, Captain? Oh, no, not yet. I have to look at the gas tanks first. Now, Miss Culbertson, you may smoke. Mm, thank you, Captain. Any idea where we are, Phillips? I think so, sir. Well, 
We're in Mexico, about 120 miles below the border, on top of a mesa rising 600 feet above the desert. 600 feet? That's right. Suck up in the air like a... like an island in the sky. I suppose we can't walk down from here. Not unless you're a human fly. Sorry, Captain. Haven't been with the circus for years. It's wonderful. So close to heaven. All right, better get that flare. And the flashlight. We'll need some light. Well, hello and welcome back. So far, all we can do is... I mean, your guess is as good as ours as to what's going on. This film is a convoluted mess. Why did they show the credits at the start of the film? Well, because they knew no one would stick around to see them at the end of the film. Did you notice how the film starts insulting the audience right off the bat? The narrator, the great Lyle Tablet, seems to have no love for humanity. That narration would make Coleman Francis scratch his head in confusion. I didn't understand what that guy was blabbering on about, so I wrote it all down. In the continuing war for survival between man and the hexapod, only an utter fool would bet against the insect. Well, I looked up hexapod in a dictionary, and it says a thing with six legs. This film is about spiders, and how many legs does a spider have? You want me to say eight, right? That's what I thought, too. I tried to count some of the spiders down in the basement, but they ran off, and one of them bit me. Okay, well, first of all, don't try to claim you now have some super spider powers or that you can catch flies, none of that. Look, the man said insects will beat people in a war. Now I got a can of Raid and a size 16 shoe that says otherwise. You tell him, boss. But one more thing. I just don't get the names in this movie. Well, you have the Muerto Desert and the Muerto State Asylum. Muerto means dead. If you were in an asylum called Dead State, wouldn't you break out? I was, and I did. And this doctor, his name is Dr. Aranya. Do you know what Aranya means in Spanish? I believe it means a uh, bad actor, guy who acts bad, something like that. No, you're a Mexican wrestler. Shouldn't your Spanish be better than mine? Lots of kicks to the head, boss. Lots of kicks to the head. Well, it means spider. So basically, it's Dr. Spider running his super secret spider lab if the spider in the cartoon had called his hotel the Hotel Aranya, no one would have known or probably cared. You know, lots of things do sound better in a foreign language. For instance, do you know what the Spanish title of this movie is? I, I do not. It's La Peculia Mala. It's all a blur, boss. What does that mean? It means bad movie. It's more like bad movies to me. This seems like two movies in one, like that shampoo conditioner set you use. I was wondering how long it would take you to figure that out. We'll explore that later. But for now, let's get back to the constant bickering and shots of people walking around that make the Mesa of Lost Women the film that it is here on Nightmare Theater. What's that? Something moves in there. I don't like it here. Not a bit. I've never had a nightmare this bit. Who could be out there? I don't know, Miss Culbertson. It could be a very natural cause, an old dead branch breaking off or a falling tree. I wouldn't worry too much. Well, here comes Wu. Now we can have a fire. Did you hear that noise out there, Wu? Yes, Master. You heard? Did you see anything? The curtain of darkness veils the sharpest eyes. We saw nothing. Well, let's get that fire going. I'll be back in a minute. occurred to me when I saw the bottle. But first, let's get this into the air. Our only flare had worked. How do we know it was seen? Well, we don't, sir. All we can do is hope. 
sorry, Miss Culberson. No glass. Oh, that's all right, Boo. It's a relief to be informal once in a while. I think I'll eat something. I feel hungry. Shut up, you fool. You were the fool, Jan. Remember his gun? A hungry animal knows no fear. No, thank you. Not brandy just before dinner. Sorry, sir, to disillusion you, but there's no food on this ship. Not even a K-ration. Thank you, sir. That helped. I'm going to look around. What for? You can't see anything. Well, we need this flashlight here. I have this. Does that give out enough light? Sure, I use it at the sanitarium all the time. It's past my dinner time, dear. Aren't you hungry? But, Mr. Masterson, we have no food with us. George will bring it. He always does. wasn't seen by anyone. How will we get off this Mercer? To be honest, sir, I don't know. We can't do anything decisive until daylight. Even I can do some things for myself. So I noticed. And, uh, no offense, man. You scare easily, don't you, Captain? suggested to me wait here until Phillips find out what happened. You'll be safer here. Are you concerned about my safety? George is out there and in trouble. I'll go. Anyone who wants to come along can do so now. I'd like to stroll before dinner. Since you insist, we all go. You come too. Yes, master. Up there, put some more wood on the fire. ways to hold each other's hand and form a line. If you don't mind. I believe it's better, Mr. Van Croft, if you hold on to Mr. Masterson's coat. And Wu, you bring up the rear.
that you, George? us alone. It looks too narrow. One wrong step and we may all go over. for the living. Poor George. Well, it's not a thing we can do for him. I'll stand close to the underbrush. I'll have to get by. scratch, all right, but nothing serious. I'll dress it as soon as we get back to the plane. I'd suggest we all stay away from these thorns. Oh, oh. oh look, the skirt's ruined. So is his heel. But you weren't hurt, Miss Cullis. No, not a bit. May we go on now, Phillips? Uh, yes, sir. Let's go.
and I hope you're ready for this. I don't want to blow your mind. No. But the All doctor right, Charles, on Saint you're not in charge anymore. Is the same guy who did the voice Take of Kit. Take this, Talking car. Yeah, the talking car on, on that show known with Dan Hasselhoff. Never you know? would have guessed. It wasn't a real talking car. Man, we 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 give up. Hey, uh, uh, okay. Oh, here, let me turn hey, we're back here with the curator, that man who lives in the sub, 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 sub basement here at the station and tends to the Merrill Movie Museum, which is full of props from your favorite movies and TV shows. Some amazing stuff is down here, and he's gonna show us another item from that collection right now. So what do we got this week, Curator? Well, this is the hero gun from the movie The Demolitionist. I'm drawing a blank, I've never heard So The Demolitionist, we've, we don't know that one. Who, who starred in that film? Well, the great thespian Nicole Eggert is the lead actor in this film. It's a Superhero film written and directed by Robert Kurtzman, who's best known as a special effects designer and artist. Wow, so this is one that we could see here in the future on Nightmare Theater. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about this prop. So we have this piece here up in front. What is this? So this is every, every time you create a new weapon for uh, a movie or anything that's new, anything that's not something that exists in everyday life, somebody has to come up with a concept for it. So that's called concept art. It usually starts as a drawing, and this is the actual concept art that was created the for actual, this weapon. The actual drawing. Right, so, so one of the, the uh, designers that worked on the movie was told, okay, we need this gun, and this is the basic idea of what we want to do with it, and they started sketching up ideas. They created this piece to visualize what the weapon would look like, and that idea was more or less approved and turned into this gun, which wow. looks very much like the drawing. Watch your finger on the trigger there. That's Stop right, it. I don't want to shoot him again. I don't again. want to shoot anybody. I don't, I don't know if that thing actually fires. I don't know if they go that far. But. It doesn't it, actually it, fire. The trigger doesn't actually move, as you can see, but it does. There's a little hidden switch here, mm. as you can see, have a working laser sight. Wow. So. Wow, my goodness. Now, does a bullet come out of each one of these? You know, I, I believe, yes, that wow. there's three shots at once, so you have three times as much accuracy. So, I mean, something like, even on a, a, you know, The Demolitionist, no offense to Mr. Kurtzman, but is a very low budget film, having props that are this, uh, you know, well done and, and look this good really adds to the film, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we own a few pieces from the film. We own a couple of miniature sets that were made for the film as well. That you, if you see them in the movie, you would never know that it's a miniature, but it's actually a detailed miniature. You see it in kind of a long shot, and that's in the the background to make this huge scientific, you know, uh, workshop where uh, laboratory sort of thing. Uh, all of that gets created in great detail and it really can't help elevate a movie that otherwise would be a C or D list movie. So the but, gun is a reason to come see the movie. Oh, absolutely. This is a, I think, a beautiful piece and one of the better weapons we have. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we kid Robert Kurtzman about this movie, but Kurtzman is actually, when it comes to props and special effects, he's really one of the masters of that genre. And not only that, a, a great concept guy in general. He came up with the concept for the movie uh, From Dust Till Dawn that he then went out and found a screenwriter who turned out to be named Quentin Tarantino to write the script based on his concept. And he also was one of the founders of K&B Effects, yes. which has gone on to be one of the biggest companies that makes these sorts of items and does special effects, including things like The Walking Dead. Yes. So, so Kurtzman is a very important figure in, in the special effects and, and prop world. And it really is well done, but you're sure it's not loaded? I'm very sure. Okay. Very all right, well, we, we, we... I wouldn't we, let you hold it if it were. Right, don't, don't point it at anyone. Anyway, while we, we try to disarm Sapo here, why don't you folks get back to the movie here on Nightmare Theater? Where's that bottle of yours, Captain? I sure could use another drink. I think we all could stand a little drink after this experience. <laughs> How about you? we can do to get help. Now, the only thing we can do, that's send up a flare. If help doesn't come by morning, 
I'll make a signal fire, but meanwhile, I'd suggest we get some sleep. We've got a long night ahead of us. Do you expect any of us to sleep after, after what happened tonight? Well, maybe not sleep, but at least you'll get some rest. But we're all in danger. Whatever killed George may attack us. Take it easy, sir. I'll stand guard and keep the fire going. My eyes open. Well, we all could use a little rest. But remember now, we are putting our lives in your hands. I realize that, sir. No, indeed. <laughs> Why don't you try to make yourself a little comfortable? Try to get some rest. I'll try. The darker shadows of the night will melt away with the morning sun. Mr. Masters, but you think you better get some sleep? Is it bedtime? Yeah. Yeah, it's bedtime. I'll wake you when morning comes. Sleep. You nervous? No. I was just thinking. Phillips, why do you ignore me? Is that what you were thinking about? Yes. And I resent it. You're not used to it, huh? Do you really dislike me that much? Well, I don't dislike you, Miss Collins. But you don't approve of me, is that it? You think I'm marrying him for his money? Well, aren't you? I'm very fond of him. But you don't love him. Well, I'm not exactly mad about him, if that's what you mean. But I am fond of him. And he can give you nice things. Oh, yes. Why not? He can give me security, for one thing. And that's important. Don't you think? Why should you care what I think? I don't exactly. It's just that I'd like you to understand me. I'd like you to understand me. I think I do understand. Oh, no, you don't. You can't. Oh, yes, I can. I've had my hard knocks, too. I've had to work ever since I was a kid. Some of it wasn't very much fun. Well, I guess it boils down to what you want out of life. What is for you, Grant? me only for what I am, and 
not for what I have. Big order. Foolish thing to do. Grant, look! Take it easy, Miss Culverton. Your imagination's getting the best of it. This is no imagination. It was there, I saw it. What did you see, dear? Well, I couldn't sleep. Phillips and I were sitting here talking, and there was a noise. I looked up, and I... I saw some women and little men. They seemed... unreal. No offense intended, Miss Culbertson, but I know what strange tricks our minds can play on us. Yes, I know, Phillips, but I'm sure I saw it. Where are you calling, my dear? Calm? Oh, I guess I lost it out there somewhere. But I gave it to you. We must find it. That comb is a valuable heirloom of my family. What do you mean by we? If you think I'm going out there once more, you're crazy. I didn't intend you to go. Who will go and look for it? May I have the light? Oh, don't be a fool! He who serves well will also serve in danger. Whoa. The wanderer in the valley of darkness shall have my guidance and protection. Okay, Wu. If you feel that way about it, I won't stop you. But don't hesitate to use that gun. I hope you know how. There's a day to be born and a day to die. Welcome back. Earlier, Sapo was thinking this movie seemed like something that took two stories and stuffed them both into a drop forge press and came up with one movie. And that's not far from wrong. What do you mean, boss? Well, there was this film called Tarantula. I saw that one, John Agar, great movie. Not that Tarantula. The history is as confusing as the film. This Tarantula was a completely different film. When it was made, producers couldn't get anyone to support it, so they hired another director, Ron Orman, to shoot additional scenes to somehow make it make sense. He added the scenes with Dr. Aranya. The original movie had no spider women, no weirdos, no insulting narration, just people getting kidnapped, then the crash on the Mesa, and then the escape. I'm still not following. Was that Asian man who had a proverb for everything, the manservant of the couple? Or did he work for Dr. Aranya? And how did they get that plane to crash on the exact Mesa? Well, Dr. Aranya was powerful, I guess, and, I, and could control where a plane crashes, maybe? I mean, look, I don't know. I got no idea. It's just a convoluted mess. I did like that Asian guy. You know, maybe I ought to start speaking in aphorisms and short little wise sayings that really make no sense, like, the movie that begins badly in August ends happily in December. Well, people will be happy when this movie ends. That's true. Speaking of endings, let's get back to the thrilling conclusion of... Uh, it's not going to be a thrilling conclusion. The Mesa of Lost Women here on Nightmare Theater.
want you to realize that if Wu doesn't come back, you will be responsible. I'll never touch that comb again, even if he finds it. I still have my heirloom. You make me... And you are a coward, sir. What? Are you... You're very brave, aren't you, since Masterson no longer has a gun. Let go of me do you want to lose your job. I haven't had the opportunity to tell you yet, but I quit when we went out there in your orders. <laughs> Something in mind for the girl and the pilot, the other I shall dispose of. What's the matter, Wu? What do you call him? I can't stand it. I'm getting out of here. Don't be a fool. The only thing keeping you back is a fire. Have a consciousness in a moment or so. Be perfectly sane again. It's unfortunate he left us in such a state before. I understand that he was committed to an asylum, attempted to uh, kill Tarantella. Grant, look. It's the dancer from the cafe. I saw him kill her. Amazing the durability of my creations. Dr. Aranya! Spanish for spider. We meet again, Doctor. Again? Did I leave here? Yes. I seem to remember vaguely that. Yes, you escaped just before, Doctor, and you let us a merry chase for covering you. Why? Why not just kill me? Why bring me back? Unfortunately, I still need your help. I'll give you one more chance to change your mind. No, never. Nothing you can do will ever make me a party to this. Tarantella. No, you're not going to torture him anymore. Come in. Don't you fool. Fool? I don't think so. 
In just a few moments, this will explode and destroy you and me and all of your terrible creations. Doctor, you're a man of science. You wouldn't destroy the greatest achievement of science. Scientist, yes, but I'm a human being, too, and that's where we differ. You two have got a chance. Through that door, down the corridor in the rock. Hurry! And who is he? What is this place? A brilliant madman. Hurry, there are only seconds left. What about you? Go, dog, you go. Your creations can grow a new arm or leg, but nothing can survive fire! I don't know how long we stumbled and staggered across that desert before we found it. Well, that's about the story. Believe it or not. Brad. How do you feel? All right, I guess. I've just been telling them our story. They don't buy it. I think he did. Is that that? That's the truth. Now, don't worry about it. You're going to be all right in a couple of days. Just a little too much sun on the bare head. Anybody thinks I'm going to load one of my trucks with oil and send it up on top of a mountain to burn a bunch of imaginary spiders? Yes, you're right, Dan. Common sense tells you there isn't anything to his story, doesn't it? Giant spiders on a desert mesa. Fantastic. Pepe is just a superstitious native. True. No one has ever been on Sapa Mesa. But it's just like any other bit of table land. Not a thing different about it. Or uh, is there? Well, there you have it, folks. Mercifully, the movie is over. The film sort of ends where it began. We're all just as confused. I don't know what happened during this movie, and what's more, I just don't care. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. Yes, it was. Let's just get this over with. In fact, hand me that bowl and rag. I wash my hands of this whole thing. Let us never speak of it again. What do we have in store for next week? We have this. You've lost the urge to experiment. Oh, every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. kept alive by experimental science, by a man whose abnormal passions inspired him to try the impossible. I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. Yes, and what of her soul? How can you make of her an experiment of horror? His mad ambitions and desires threaten every woman possessing an attractive body. Girls whose measurements make them beauty contest participants. Professional figure models such as this. All are prey to his distorted desires. What's locked behind that door? Horror. No normal mind can imagine. Something even more terrible than you. Horror has its ultimate. And I'm that. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Cortner's mistakes. He intends to kill somebody. Drop the mother body. We've got to stop him. Wow. Just wow. Well, we hope you folks tune in next week for the brain that wouldn't die. In the meantime, May all your dreams be nightmares. Do you want me to dance again? No, I don't. I really, really don't. 